I saw how we improved working lives for people by introducing automation and robotics. How bad jobs became good jobs because of it. And all of a sudden, those micro savings became extremely important. And thanks to that, we are now utilized by all the Western and most of the Japanese automotive companies on the assembly line. It started with a dream of making data available to help people work better. Welcome to the Platform Pioneers, a show about the bright minds behind the world's largest digital platforms and the stories of how they built them. I am your host, Kuros, and together we'll uncover the secrets behind creating, scaling, and managing some of the most successful platforms out there. Welcome back to the Platform Pioneers podcast. Today, our guest is Stefan Lamper, CEO of ProGlove, the cutting-edge solution for employee enablement providing, amongst other things, smart wearable scanners that drive continuous worker-driven productivity gains. Uh, Stefan, maybe without further ado, could you maybe introduce yourself to the audience as we usually do it and give us a bit of a brief overview of uh, your journey of your career um, that kind of led you to become the CEO of ProGlove. Okay, yeah. So I've had a, I'm actually a robotic geek. So I love robots. And now it's kind of funny because now I work very much with people and how people can work better. Um, and there is actually a connection. So I started my career in a company called ABB. I was doing all type of jobs, all from uh, engineering, so forth and, and, so, uh, and, and so on. Uh, ended up in sales general management and into the executive board of the robotics business. Uh, from there, I went to KUKA, spent a number of years as CEO of KUKA Robotics, uh, and that's what led me to move now and uh, living the last years here in Germany, this wonderful country. Um, and uh, keep, But one of the things that always was there in the back of my head is that I saw how we improved working lives for people by introducing automation and robotics, how bad jobs became good jobs because of it. And that became kind of a little bit my connecting link. From that, I moved into logistics and started working in a heavy logistic company called Kalmar. I was the, the president and I was a, a part of the board of, uh, of CargoTech there. And that was also the same thing, improving um, automation, improving worker, uh, um, uh, worker safety in the harbors by automating in heavy logistics. So very much on the outside. We uh, at Kalmar, we did move about one third of world's containers with our equipment. And from there, I ended up at ProGlove. And now we are very much in the frontline worker. And I'm here since a little bit more than a year, extremely excited and enthusiastic about really working with people directly instead of help, having robots helping people. Now it's really helping people helping people. Yes, nice. And, and I mean, impressive career and also a very interesting kind of like um, move to the application of, uh, of technology now to, to help people. Um, if you look uh, back at uh, the beginnings, what, um, uh, what, what was kind of like the pain point that, that ProGrove um, uh, kind of like tried to solve? And, and what is ProGrove today? You know, ProGlove started 2014 or thereabouts. So it's 10 years old right now. And it started very much at BMW here at Munich. And it was about how can we, through collecting data, improve processes. And on the quest of that, the founders came up with, well, what we can do on micro improvement is to actually improve this old fashioned scanning process. And they then invented the variable scanner that was going on a glove. And that saved some two to four seconds in each of the assembly uh, uh, moments that is done on the assembly line. And obviously, when you have about four thousands of those going out throughout the whole automotive works, you take four times four thousand and all of a sudden those micro savings became extremely important. And thanks to that, we are now utilized by all the Western and most of the Japanese automotive companies on the assembly line. So that's where, uh, where, where it started. Started with a dream of making data available to help people work better, ended up with actually as a first product having a wearable industrial scanner on the back of the hand. Nice. And, and maybe for the audience, if you make it very uh, um, uh, tangible, how, how does... Uh... And um, a user 
uh, use these gloves um, and kind of like like uh, does does a micro improvement. Um, that, that would be probably probably very interesting for to hear. Yeah, so basically everybody of us have seen it. And before I started, probably we didn't think about it too much. But we have all seen these clunky, big, like pistol scanners that people are utilizing. You see them at the airport and on, in store sites and so forth. And those actually weigh quite a bit. And they often have a cable attached to them. And because of that, it's both heavy when you work with it the whole day. On, on top of it, it's not very... It's, it's, it's not very slim, so it, 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 it's actually a little bit of a uh, tedious to work with it. And what, uh, what we do at ProGlove, we took that and put it into a 40 gram little nice plastic beautiful shell and we integrated it into a very slim little glove that you put on your hand. Typically people work with some kind of gloves already and it goes on top of that glove and it's very neat and very nice and people actually don't forget that they even have it. So because it's so it's so uh, so small and so light and, and so ergonomic. So people often even actually walk home with it and, and find themselves in the parking lot driving the car off and say, oh I, oh, I still have the scanner on, which is one of the challenges that we have fixed now on how to help customers with that one. But that's what, 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 uh, what this uh, uh, variable technology is all about at this point in time. Uh, right. I mean, this is uh, uh, extremely interesting. Uh, obviously, also kind of like the, the interjection, as you mentioned, uh, of, of technology um, and people. Uh, as you mentioned, kind of like uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, data in play. Um, uh, very early on, it was about uh, um, efficiency gain. Um, how do you kind of like uh, think about the data that is collected about um, uh, utilizing that data uh, for further efficiency, for further um, uh, security. How how is kind of like the vision behind this? Yeah, so 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 we we are right now in a very very exciting time. So you know, we started searching for data, ended up with making this extremely nice industrial variable scanner, and now we are back to where we started. We call it back to the future. Uh, you know, maybe so you've seen the movie. Uh, of course, now. yes, yes, one of my favorites. <laughs> and what is that? Yes, yeah, so now we are able to provide our customers with exactly the ergonomic movements that the, the, that the, that the um, uh, assembly worker, or now we are very much in the logistics centers, what they do. So we call it how many red moves do they do, how many yellow moves, and how many green moves. And with that, we can actually project and we can calculate what is the risk that someone has a work-related injury. Because if you work a lot in red moves, which is basically hands above your shoulders, if you work too much with that, you are going to be in trouble, even if you're 25 years and you're strong as an ox. It doesn't matter. You will get into trouble. So we can see that because uh, the scanner is on the hand. So we, we can, if the customer wants, which the customer wants, we can then monitor that and set in workstation A, this is how many red moves we have. And then customer knows that has to be fixed. We have to change around the layouts. We have to change around the process because we need to provide for more green moves, which is basically a waist height move, which is the ideal, uh, ideal way of moving packages. Interesting. If you, if you think about um, kind of like the industries uh, you have been originally in, automotive um, assembly, then moving into logistics, um, maybe question number one. What would be uh, differences? Of what also would be be synergies in kind of collecting data in in identifying um, uh, uh, red, green, um, uh, yellow, so to speak, um, and 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 how do these industries you're in compare to each other? Well, uh, one of the things that is very comparable is that they are both under uh, the same some of the similar mega trends. You know, it is a very, very rough competition out there, especially in this market environment we have right now. So everybody needs to be looking for continuous if, uh, improvements in, when it comes to efficiencies. And that goes through, no matter if you're running a logistics center or if you're assembling an, uh, a, a, a car, you need, to, you need to continuously improve yourself. And having the data to do so is, uh, is vital. Um, and then working with tools uh, as we provide that uh, that also directly provides for a better uh, better efficiency. Those are similarities. 
Uh, then there are some some differences, of course, but uh, but there are more similarities between these industrial uses than I would say that there are differences. Very interesting. If you think, and, and, and that is something that we discuss here very frequently, if you think uh, uh, about growth, you just mentioned one growth part, which is kind of like, like uh, utilizing an asset, which is data, um, uh, to kind of like chop um, and, and, and add a product. If you think about um, verticals, if you think about geographies, you mentioned Europe, uh, Japan, how, how um, is your, your thinking in terms of uh, kind of like moving geographically or moving to other verticals? Is the product similarly relevant? What are interesting verticals where you might need to adapt? Just maybe uh, um, as, as food for thought. So, so geographically, we, we, we started in Germany. So obviously that is our home market and we have expanded out throughout uh, Europe. We are growing uh, quite rapidly in North America. Uh, so U.S. Canada has been uh, uh, has been on our list for a number of years now. Now we are starting up in Mexico as well. Uh, we we do have partners covering parts of Asia, Japan, China, um, and Australia, New Zealand. But we do not have our own presence today in Asia, and that will be something that we will start building up next year. We are also now hiring the first people in the Middle East, uh, very much, uh, um, and obviously with focus out of the Dubai area and in towards Saudi Arabia. We see a lot of interesting uh, economical activity there, and, and we think our product will fit very nicely also in this area. So that's from a geographic standpoint. From a vertical standpoint, I mean, the first one was automotive, and, and it's, that's really our home vertical. Um, right now, what we are focusing on is e-commerce. It became number two. And some of the e-commerce companies that you might have heard of are our biggest customers today. So they are actually bigger than the automotive customers. Um, and then uh, the next steps, and we've just then uh, um, got into retail. So we, talk, we divide it in retail food and retail fashion. Uh, retail food, uh, we've got off to a really nice start in the UK, um, and and there uh, we we have made it public. Um, we we now uh, equip Morrison uh, with uh, the in-store picking application. So basically, the people running around in the store picking up goods now they utilize. Uh, program instead of utilizing a big gun, etc. And you know, so nice because you have two free hands. So all of a sudden, with these two free hands, you can pick so much better, faster, instead of always picking up a gun and, and, and pointing at your potato chips or whatever the UK people uh, like to eat. And uh, now they can get that done so much faster. So they get the shepherd's pie as well at the same time. You know? so. <laughs> So, so, so these are some of them. And then the, I would say the last vertical that we are really focusing is obviously the 3PL. And here we have some big customer groups as well. So, so th that's the verticalization. Uh, if I repeat it, automotive was our home. We are moving. E-commerce became the second. We are now in retail food and we are going towards retail fashion. Uh, we have some really interesting projects going on there. And then we have 3PL. So those would be the five uh, verticals where we are really focusing on. And, and, and this is like kind of like looking at, at the 10 year, 10 year history, uh, obviously also mirroring a lot uh, the trends in, um, uh, in the overall economic uh, with retail online, uh, uh, obviously with e-commerce um, that has a huge boom, 3PL with a huge boom, people um, kind of like, like shipping, shipping more and more. If you see kind of like these trends, these economic trends um, uh, that you kind of like um, obviously uh, capitalize on, um, but also technology and I would say um, workforce behavior trends. What are the the most interesting uh, developments that you are that you are seeing there um, uh, that, that are relevant for you? Be it uh, a higher uh, or lower retention, be it people uh, changing jobs more often, be it uh, jobs being shipped uh, to other regions where where this might be relevant, and also obviously technology is a place a big role in that. Yeah, no, but you're putting the finger on one of them, and that is, that, that is job retention. People are changing. In, you know, our customers on the logistics side, generally, they have a turn, the annual turnover of close to 50%. The last statistic I saw, I saw was 46%. So, you know, the cost of retraining people 
you know, it, it's just tremendous and all the errors you do when you're new into a job, etc. So you need to provide people with better tools and a better working environment. And that's what we are all about. That's what we are passionate about. Uh, and that goes goes uh, throughout the, 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 the industry. Obviously, here in Germany, in the Middle East, we don't have that challenge necessarily. But when you go to the big brands, even in automotive, we start seeing it, we, we, you know, within, just if we look at the retirement situation, also in Germany, within next 10 years, about uh, about 30% of blue collar uh, people will get, will get get retired it is just an amazing acceleration of challenges coming up and that's why we are passionate at program to really provide a really healthy and a good place to work with good modern tools that uh, that people directly love to work with and that's what we see when people start working with program that that the frontline worker really like it and they say this is a great place to be. And then obviously with the, with the data possibility to continuously improve the work environment. Yeah. Has, and, and, and that is a question that has been subject uh, very often on, on, on this program. Has kind of like uh, a data crunching technologies, AI made your life easier? Had as, um, has it an impact on, on product development? Uh, were you always anyway an AI uh, um, user? How, how did this kind of like impact uh, uh, product development and product usage? Yeah, it's, AI is, is, is a very, very interesting chapter, obviously, and we utilize it when it comes to our, um, uh, to, to, to make our, uh, our code writing uh, faster, uh, we, you know, we, we, we get that done. But, you know, for instance, very simple areas such as uploading a manual and then saying, how uh, can I do this better? And now you get an answer from it because, and you don't need to go through the manual anymore. You can ask smart questions. And that means for us that we are hiring continuously people. We need to get them on the job. We need to make them productive very easily. We utilize AI to that. So that all our manuals, all our technology is uploaded and for a new person, you know, he does. He or she doesn't need to run around and ask or, or find out. Just ask our own uh, system, and now he or she gets an answer. This is the way we do it. This is why we do it, and this is the way it's been set up. But so we utilize it a lot. Uh, it is featuring. We have a monthly hackathon. We call it the 48, the 48 hour challenge. I was participating in it myself uh, here two weeks ago. I did not win, but I was uh, I was still happy to participate. And in that, we have a lot of AI um, ideas coming up. So, uh, so that's going to come to our customers within short. But uh, on your question, how do we utilize it? We utilize it when we are coding. We utilize it to get new people up, uh, up to speed faster. Very interesting. And I, and I think uh, I've uh, uh, discussed the topic a lot, um, obviously, with hacker online businesses, uh, be it marketplaces, uh, uh, be it that platform. But that's that's a beautiful thing. Uh, and it's such a game changer for so many industries that even uh, at that intersection of technology and um, and, and employees at the human, it can actually uh, be, be beneficial. Um, maybe kind of like looking um, a bit into, into the future. Uh, what are the... Um, kind of like the, the big goals that you are trying to achieve in the next, uh, let's say, uh, three years? Is it more um, penetration, so to speak, of, uh, of existing um, uh, customers, helping them more with kind of like, as you mentioned, uh, the training aspect? Um, is it more bringing uh, such an amazing technology uh, to, to more customers, to more people, I would say, uh, uh, geographically? Um, is it on the product side? What are, what are kind of like, like um, uh, the the big goals, so to speak, for you um, in long term? Yeah. No, so the big goal uh, for, for us here at Progla, it is to really establish uh, um, Progla as a, as a platform and as, uh, uh, when it comes to, to analyzing uh, data in, uh, within our, uh, the, 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 the shoes and verticals. Uh, let me explain. So basically today we, we, um, we look at the scanner because the scanner is always sitting on a hand and based upon that we can see how is the heat map, for instance, 
of a warehouse. Uh, where do you pick more? Where do you pick less? And now we can see, is that actually the right place to have products? As I talked about, we can see how people are moving, red, yellow, green moves, etc. We have also started to, uh, uh, to give data to where are the devices? As I said, some people even bring them with, with them home and they forget about them because they are so light. Um, now we will be able to provide that data. But the long-term uh, 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 direction we have, that is that this will become, and it is becoming now, a platform for other technologies to be connected to. Um, so if someone, for instance, wants to have utilize uh, uh, smart glasses, they can connect to our platform and utilize those smart glasses. And those smart glasses will be able to report the same type of data, but coming from another, another data force, source. And that's what we are seeing now, a number of customers coming to us asking if they can utilize our platform for their technology. And we welcome to do that. Because by the end of the day, that anything that helps our customer helps us and helps to build now an ecosystem of companies, of new technology companies. I mean, that's a quite interesting uh, point. I was, I was sitting the other day uh, um, um, across uh, one of our investors and they had um, a smart ring measuring everything around uh, the health. They had a smart watch uh, and their smart glasses. Is that something, um, is it, as you mentioned, a lot about the ecosystem? Will there at some point be um, also an extension to new, I would say, devices? Or um, how, how uh, kind of like, um, uh, will that play out eventually? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we want to have a lot more devices. Uh, we don't necessarily want to develop them ourselves because we think, and, uh, and, and I'm absolutely, absolutely sure, if we're going to do everything uh, ourselves, then we get slow. And, we, you know, it's difficult to be innovative on everything. What we want to be innovative on is to have that platform of, of analyzing the data coming from those devices and invite new device innovation into our platform. As you said, if it, if it is a ring, if it is a watch, if it is glasses or other uh, variable technologies, obviously we are working on some other variable technology and I'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, but it is the important thing is to, is to provide a digital human twin by the end of the day by measuring enough so that you can actually see is this person and is this workstation operating in an optimal way or do we need to do something to make this person have a better work life and be more uh, uh, and be more productive uh, at the same time nice and, and now obviously you you you, you got us uh, very uh, very curious what what else like i mean it's it's very intuitive if you work with your hands blue color worker that uh, kind of like wearables would be would be at your hands uh, what kind of other ideas uh, for for wearables for measuring uh, data be it human data be it kind of like movement data uh, would there be so, so right now and i cannot go into great length because we are still waiting for a number of ip uh, applications to mature. But I can say one of the things that our customers are telling us, Stefan, we are getting so many new people on board. We train them so much. In the beginning, they make a lot of errors, which is normal. If you could have a device for us that helps them, that guides them, that would be great. So it's nothing to do with scanning necessarily, but it is a worker guidance tool that the person can utilize, especially uh, important in the first few months of uh, of someone's work, let's say in a warehouse. Um, so guiding people, making them do the right things. Uh, I cannot say too much more than that, but uh, but we will launch it quarter one next year, and I think it's going to be a great tool for a lot of our customers. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna show that we are absolutely on top when it comes to innovating in industrial variable technology. Perfect. I mean, we, we are almost at the end, but I I'll, I'll have to ask a follow up question. Obviously, you you come uh, from robotic, um, uh, where some of these activities probably would be at some point outsourced, so to speak, to to a robot. Will technology uh, like Progov? Um, kind of prolong um, or increase the effectivity, uh, the efficiency uh, of humans? How will this compete 
with uh, more and more activities, also in warehouses, being taken over uh, more and more by robots. What is your kind of like vision coming from both of the worlds? Yeah, that's that's a great question, and I get that question a lot. You know, so obviously robots will slowly take over more and more work, but you know there are so much manual work and so much work that needs to be done, and it's better done manual because there is nothing that is more flexible than a, than a, than a person. Uh, and the combination between robotizing some areas that are very repetitive, where you have very standardized flow, where you know how your demand cycle look like, yeah, that's perfect for robotics. But you know, there is always an input to that area of robotics, and there is always an output, and those are still, and they will always be manual, and those are then today connected with with uh, with ProGlove, and that's why we now have a great collaboration with a lot of robotics companies. Uh, the companies that I have represented, but also new in, uh, uh, robotic innovator uh, such as Locus Robotic, Geek Plus, just to mention some few uh, that uh, then utilize our technology uh, in this uh, in this interface between manual and robotics. Oh, interesting! And, and uh, obviously, gets gets uh, gets everyone uh, very curious and excited for how. That I would say the the average worker's life will look at ten years and twenty years, um, and 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 how kind of like the end game, so to speak, will uh, will look with with technologies uh, like this. As I mentioned, we are almost at the end. At the very end, uh, I always like to um, like to ask a question to kind of like round it off. When you when you think about your um, uh, your day to day uh, work life, what is um, and it can be everything from regulatory. Uh, from uh, uh, legal, from technology, what is kind of like uh, your your biggest challenge, obstacle, so to speak, and uh, at the same time, what is uh, what gives you most pleasure, most fun in 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 your day to day work life? The biggest challenge, you know, I have a hard time seeing challenges because I always see challenges as opportunities. Um, I would say the biggest challenge is probably to to have everybody um, within Pro Glove really connected because when you get become a little bit bigger organization you tend to 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 end up with some silos and that would be probably the biggest challenge and and i'm i'm really a, a warrior against uh, silos and i always talk about it and try to make meetings and so forth and so on and and pulling people together uh, for strategy workshops and so forth and so on. So, so that is probably the biggest challenge. We become we are becoming bigger, and all of a sudden these silos comes up, and the ugly face are there, and and that would probably be the biggest challenge. On the opportunity side, it is that you know our our uh, reason to be at Proglo are three things. One is we want to create a safer work environment for frontline workers. We want to create a healthier work environment for frontline workers, and we want to make them hyper-efficient. That is what makes me passionate about Monday morning and excited on Friday evening dinner with my family to talk about what we have done on these three things. Because you know what? It makes people's working life a little bit better, and it's just such a source of energy to feel that, hey, we are taking small steps forward to make people's working life just a little bit better. Perfect. And I think uh, perfect uh, uh, concluding remarks. Um, Stefan, first of all, thank you so much uh, for joining us. I think uh, this was um, definitely one of the most interesting uh, guests we had. We learned a lot about um, probably an area and in industry uh, that, that uh, many of the listeners are not um, uh, that kind of like uh, have looked deep into. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we a great a uh, high-tech topic that combines high-tech with, with the human touch. Thanks a lot for joining the program. Thank you much for having me.